and welcome back to part two of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version. We are um, doing our weekly Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We are doing chapters one through 21 of the book of Job. We have just done the introduction, read the introduction out of the Tree of Life version, and also out of understanding the Bible Revised Edition. Um, and this is done by Dr. Leroy Carter. I took some of that from, so I want to give him a shout out and give him credit for some of um, the historical facts of the books of Job as well. Um, so that it's not just from my notations and my studies, and it, I, I give credit um, when I'm using other people's uh, literature as well. It's very good and very thorough um, background on the book of Job. So we're going to start with chapter one, Job and his children. There was a man in the land of Uz, that's Uzi, whose name was Job. Now that man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. That man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Now, remember, he was blameless and upright, and the Hebrew word for that is yashar, and that's Y-A-S-H-A-R. Now it was customary for his sons to hold a banquet each on his own day in his own house. They would send to invite their sisters to eat and drink with them. When the round of banquet days was completed, Job would send for them and consecrate them. He would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them. For Job said, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did every day. So he prayed for his children um, so that they would um, do right by God. And just in case they sinned, he wanted to make sure they were covered. The adversary tests Job. One day the sons of God came to present themselves before Adonai and the Satan, the Satan, um, also came with them. Adonai said to the Satan or Satan, where have you come from? The Satan responded to Adonai and said, From roaming the earth and from walking on it, Adonai said to the Satan, Did you notice my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and spurns evil. Then the Satan responded to Adonai, saying, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, his household, and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land, but now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will certainly curse you to have your face. I curse you to your face, rather. Then Adonai said to the Satan, everything he has in your in your hand, only do not extend your hand against him. So the Satan departed from the presence of Adonai. One day when his sons and daughters were eating, and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job, saying, The oxen were plowing, and the donkeys were grazing near them, when the Sabaeans attacked and carried them off. They also killed the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone escaped to tell you. While this one was still speaking, another came in and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and has burned up the sheep and servants. It has consumed them, and I, I alone escaped to tell you. While this one was still speaking, another came in and said the Chaldeans formed three bands and raided the camels and took them all away. They also killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I, only I, escaped to tell you. And while this one was still speaking, another came in and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine at their oldest brother's house, when suddenly a mighty wind came from beyond the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it collapsed on the young people, and they died, and I, only I, escaped to tell you. Then Job got up, tore his robe, shaved his, shaved his head, fell to the ground, and worshipped. Then he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return there. Adonai gave, and Adonai has taken away. Blessed be the name of Adonai. 
Through all this, Job did not sin, nor did he cast reproach on God. And that's the end of chapter 1. There's a footnote, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Stay alert, watch out. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, searching for someone to devour. Chapter 2, Affliction of the Body. Again, the day came when the sons of God came to present themselves before Adonai, and they, Satan, and they, Satan, also arrived among them to present himself before Adonai. Adonai said to him, Where are you coming from? The Satan answered Adonai from roaming the earth and from walking on it. Then Adonai said to the Satan, Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and spurns evil, and he still holds firmly to his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. The Satan replied to Adonai, saying, Skin for skin, a man will give up all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his bone in his flesh, and he will certainly curse you to your face. And I said to the Satan, Very well, he is in your hand, I'll spare his life. So he allowed him to go so far, but not to take his life. So the Satan departed from the presence of Adonai and afflicted Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the top of his head. He took a piece of broken pottery to scrape himself while he was sitting among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Are you still holding firm to, the, to your integrity? Curse God and die. He said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Should we accept the good from God and not accept the bad? Through all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Now three friends sit Shiva. When Job's three friends heard about all this calamity that had come upon him, each of them came from his own place. Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuahite, and Zophar, the Namathite. They met together to come and mourn with him and to comfort him. But when they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize them. They did not recognize him, and they raised their voices and wept. Each tore his robe and threw dust into the air onto their heads. Then they sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights. No one spoke a word to him because they saw that his pain was very great. Chapter 3, Job curses his own birth. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed his day. Then Job answered and said, May the day I was born perish in the night that said a man is conceived. That day may it be darkness. May God above not regard it. May no light shine on it. May darkness and deep gloom reclaim it. May a cloud settle over it. May whatever blackens the day terrify it. That night may thick darkness seize it. May it not be included among the days of the year, nor be entered among the numbers of the months. Indeed, may that night be barren. May no joyful shout enter it. May those who curse, curse the day. Those ready to awaken, Leviathan. May its morning stars be darkened. May it hope for light, but have none. May it never see the eyelids of dawn, for it did not shut the doors of the womb on me, nor did it hide trouble from my eyes. Why did I not die at birth and expire as I exited the womb? Why did the knees welcome me and breasts that I might nurse? For now I would be lying down in quiet. I would be asleep and at rest with kings and counselors of the earth who built for themselves places now desolate with princes who had gold who filled their houses with silver, or why was I not hidden like a stillborn, like infants who never saw light? There the wicked cease from turmoil, and there the weary are at rest. Prisoners are at ease together. They do not hear the voice of the taskmaster. Small and great are there, and slave is free from his master. Why is light given to one who suffers, and life to the bitter of soul, to those who long for death, but it does not come? who dig for, more, for it more than for hidden treasures, who are filled with gladness and rejoice when finding the grave. Why is light given to a man whose way is hidden and whom God has hedged in? For my sign comes instead of my bread, and my groans pour out like water. For the thing I dreaded has come upon me, and what I feared has happened to me. I have no ease, no quietness. I have no rest, but tur turmoil came. 
So Job is wishing that he would have never been born and, you know, longing for it to be over. Um, but he's not cursing God. Chapter 4, Eliphaz, God is righteous. Then Eliphaz, the, the Temanite, responded and said, If one attempts a word with you, will you become impatient? But who can keep from speaking? Behold, you instructed many. You have strengthened weak hands. Your words have supported those who stumbled and strengthened buckling knees. Yet now it has come to you, and you are discouraged. It strikes you, and you are dismayed. It is not your piety, your confidence. Is, is not your piety, your confidence, the integrity of, of your ways, your hope? Reflect now, who being innocent ever perished, and where were the upright destroyed? <clears throat> so Eliphaz is just basically saying, you know, hey, you know, you're pious and you're confident and, and you know, it's your own fault. You know, are you, are you innocent? Do the innocent ever perish? Um, as I have seen those who plow iniquity and sow harm, reap them. Sorry, I was losing my voice there. By the breath of God, they perish. By the blast of his anger, they vanish. The lion may roar and the cub growl, but the teeth of young lions are broken. The mighty lion perishes for lack of prey, and the lioness's cubs are scattered. And he continues with testimony of an accusing spirit. Now a word was secretly brought to me, and my ear caught a whisper of it amid unsettling visions in the night when a deep sleep falls on men, dread and trembling seized me and made my bones shake. Then a spirit brushed over my face, and the hair of my flesh stood on end. It stood still, but I could not recognize its appearance. A form was before me, and I heard a murmur, a voice, Can a mortal be righteous before God, or a man pure before his Creator? If he puts no trust in his servants and accuses his angels of error, how much more those who dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed before the moth, from morning until evening they are beaten into pieces, and unnoticed they perish forever. Is not their tent cord pulled out so that they may die without wisdom? And then we have chapter 5, Eliphaz, God is correcting you. Cry out now, will anyone answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? For resentment kills a fool. And envy slays the simple. I myself have seen a fool taking root, but suddenly I cursed his dwelling. His sons are far from safety and crushed at the gate without a deliverer. The hungry consumes his harvest, taking it even from among thorns, and the thirsty pants after their wealth. For evil does not come from the dust, nor does trouble sprout from the ground. Yet man is born for trouble as surely as sparks fly upward. But as for me, I would seek God. I would lay my cause before God who does great things beyond comprehension, wanders without number, who gives rain to the earth and sends water over the plains, who places the lowly on high and lifts mourners to salvation, who frustrates the plans of the crafty so that their hands attain no success, who catches the clever in their craftiness and thwarts the plan of the cunning. By the day they encounter darkness and grope at noon as if it were night. But he saves the needy from the sword of their mouth and from the clutches of the mighty, so the helpless have hope, and injustice shuts its mouth. Behold, happy is the one whom God corrects. So do not despise the discipline of Shaddai, for he inflicts pain, but he also binds up. He injures, yet his hands also heal. From six calamities he will deliver you, even in seven no harm will touch you. In famine he will redeem you from death and in war. From the power of the sword you will be hidden from the lash of the tongue, and not fear when violence comes. You will laugh at violence and famine, and will not fear the beasts of the earth, for you will have a covenant with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field will be at peace with you. You will not know shalom in your tent, and you will take stock at your home and find nothing missing. I'm sorry, you will know shalom in your tent. And you will take stock of your home and find nothing missing. You will know that your descendants will be numerous, your offspring like the grass of the earth. You will come to the grave in vigor like sheaves of grain in its season. Behold, we have investigated this. It is true. Hear it and apply it to yourself. Chapter 6, Job cries for justice. Job responded and said, 
if only my grief could be weighed and my calamity placed on the scales, for it outweighs the sands of the sea. That is why my words have been rash, for the arrows of Shaddai are in me. My spirit drinks in their poison. God terrors, God's terrors line up against me. Does a wild donkey bright over fresh grass or an ox bellow over his fodder? Is something bland eaten without salt? Is there taste in the white of an egg? My soul refuses to touch them. They are like sickening food to me. Oh, that my request would be realized, that God would grant my hope, that God would be willing to crush me, to release his hand and cut me off. Then I would still be comforted, even rejoice in spite of unrelenting pain, for I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should hope? What is my end that I should endure? Is my strength the strength of rock? Is my flesh bronze? Is there no help within me? Has not success been banished from me? A despairing person should have the kindness of his friend, even if he forsakes the fear of Shaddai. My brothers have acted deceptively as a seasonal stream, as a torrential stream that overflows when darkened by thawing ice and obscured by snow. But when they are scorched, they dry up, and in the heat, they vanish from their place. Caravans turn aside from their course. They go up into the wasteland and perish. Caravans of Tima looked intently. The travelers of Sheba hoped for them. They were distressed because they had been confident. They came so far and were disappointed. Indeed, now you have become nothing. You see a terror and are afraid. Have I ever said, give it to me or pay a bribe for me from your wealth or save me from the enemy's hand or redeem me from a ruthless hand? Teach me and I will be silent. Explain to me how I've been wrong. Honest words are painful, but what does your arguing prove? Do you intend to correct my words and treat the words of a despairing man as wind? Would you cast lots for an orphan and barter over your friend? Now be so kind as to look at me. I will not lie to your face. Relent. Do not be unjust. Reconsider, for my righteousness is in it. Is injustice on my tongue? Can my palate not discern evil? And that was Job's response here. Futility of days um, continues continues with his response. Does not man have hard labor on earth? Are not his days like those of a hired laborer, like a slave longing for the shadow or a hired man waiting for his pay? So I have inherited months of futility and nights of distress have been appointed to me. When I lie down, I say, when will I arise? The night drags on, and I toss until the day dawns. My flesh is clothed with maggots and clods of dirt. My skin is broken and festering. My days fly faster than a weaver's shuttle and come to an end without hope. Remember, my life is but a breath. My eyes will not see goodness again. The eye that sees me now will see me no more. Your eyes will be on me. But I will be no more. As a cloud vanishes in and is gone, so one descending into Sheol does not come up. He will never return to his house. His place does not know him. So I will not keep silent. I will speak in the distress of my spirit. I will complain in bitterness of soul. Am I a sea or a monster of the deep that you have set a watch over me when I say my bed will comfort me? My couch will ease my complaint? Then you frighten me with dreams and terrify me with visions so that my soul prefers strangulation and my bones death. I despise it. I would not live forever. Leave me alone for my days are a vapor. What is mankind that you magnify him, that you set your heart on him, that you visit him every morning and test him in every moment? Will you never look away from me or let me alone until I swallow my spittle? Have I sinned? What have I done to you? A watcher of men, why have you set me as your target? Have I become a burden to you? Why do you not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now I will lie down in the dust, and you will search for me, but I will be gone. So then we have Bildad, God restores the righteous. And this is chapter 8. Then Bildad, the Shuahite, answered and said, how long will you say these things? The words of your mouth are like a mighty wind. Does God pervert justice? Does Shaddai pervert justice? Is If your children sinned against him, he handed them over to their rebellion. 
if you would seek God and plead with Shaddai, if you are pure and upright, even now he will awaken for you and restore your righteous abode. And though your beginning was small, your future would flourish. Now ask the previous generation, consider the findings of their fathers, for we were born yesterday and know nothing, and our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not teach you and tell you? Will they not bring forth words from their hearts? Can papyrus grow tall without a marsh? Can reeds flourish without water? When still in bloom and uncut, it withers more quickly than other grass. Such are the ways of all who forget God, the hope of the godless perishes whose confidence it is snapped off. His trust is a spider's web. He leans against his house, but it does not stand. He holds fast to it, but it does not hold up. He is well watered. He is a well-watered plant in the sun, spreading its shoots over his garden. He entwines his roots around a heap of stones and, and looks for a place between the rocks. If he is uprooted from his place, it, it denies him saying, I never saw you. Such is his joyous course, and from the earth others spring up. Surely God does not spurn the blameless or strengthens the hand of evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame. The tent of the wicked will be no more. So that's his friend Bildad, who's pretty... Um, rough on him saying you know hey you know if your children sinned against him he handed them over to their rebellion chapter 9 is job's response job who is righteous before god job responded and said truly i know it is so but how can one be righteous before god if anyone wished to contend with him he could not answer him once in a thousand he is wise in heart and mighty in strength who has resisted him and come out whole he who moves mountains yet they do not know it who overthrows them in his anger, who shakes the earth from its place until its pillars tremble, who speaks to the sun so it does not rise and seals up the stars. He alone spreads out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He makes the bear Orion and, and Pleiades and the constellations of the south. He does great and unfathomable things, wanders beyond number. If he were to pass by me, I would not see him. Were he to move past me, I would not perceive him. If he were to snatch away, who could restrain him? Who could say to him, what are you doing? God does not restrain his anger under him. The helpers of Rahab cower. How then can I answer him or choose my words with him? Even if I were right, I would not answer. I would implore the mercy of my judge. Even if I called and he answered me, I would not believe that he would listen to my voice. He who crushes me with a storm and multiplies my wounds for no reason, he does not allow me to catch my breath, but fills me with bitterness. If it is a question of strength, certainly he is the mighty one. If it is a matter of justice, who will summon me? Even if I were innocent, my mouth would condemn me if I were guiltless, it will declare me perverse. I am guiltless. I have no concern for myself. I despise my life. It is all the same. Therefore, I say he destroys both the blameless and the wicked. If I scorch smite suddenly, he mocks the despair of the innocent. If the land fails, I'm, I'm sorry, if the land falls into the hand of the wicked, he blindfolds the faces of its ju judges. If it is not he, then who is it? My days are swifter than a runner. They flee away without seeing goodness. They slip by like reed boats, like an eagle swooping down on its prey. If I say I will forget my complaint, I will put off my sad face and be cheerful. I still dread all my pains, for I know you will not find me innocent. If I am condemned, why should I struggle in vain? If I wash myself with melted snow and cleanse my hands with lye, then you would plunder me into the pit and my own clothes would detest me. For he is not a human being like I am, that I can answer him, that we could go to court together. There is no arbitrator between us who could lay his hand on both of us, on us both, who would remove his rod from me so that his terror would not frighten me. Then I would speak and not fear him, except it is not so with me. And I'm going to pause it here and come back with part three.